Yeah, I think the actual goal of the company is now that we've proven the technology works and we've demonstrated all the key elements and even recently gone faster, as you just mentioned, is to actually look for uh, the next, the first commercial route. Uh, we know that we can hit that uh, five, six, seven hundred uh, mile per hour range, and uh, we are looking around the world right now for those customers that want to move ahead uh, with the exciting prospect of building the world's first Hyperloop. Customers meaning cities and municipalities. I mean, if I'm if I'm somebody in a city, Rob, I would imagine that you know this is a very impressive milestone. But you need to prove that the speed and, and the vacuum is able to be withstood for you know, thousands of miles or however long the actual path is, right? Yeah, we're real comfortable with that. In fact, uh, with, for m many of the models that we built, we actually w uh, far exceeded uh, those expectations. So we aren't really concerned about taking this to scale. Uh, what we are considering, though, is now knowing that we can go really fast. Uh, we need to think about what that means from a passenger experience or a freight and logistics experience. So. Here at CES, what we have just announced is uh, the world's first application that emb embeddies, embodies Hyperloop and then other modes of transportation so that you can actually have a, a seamless experience. It's not good enough to just go 50, 60, 300 miles really, really fast unless the rest of the transportation experience changes as well. So that's the application we've just announced. We're pretty excited about that. And I think it'll change how we look at moving between cities. And uh, I, that's where I, I think as well a lot of transportation authorities are going to be extremely Rob, interested. Rob, uh, it's Brian Sullivan. I love what you're doing because high-speed rail in the Northeast means about 48 miles an hour, unfortunately. But what is the cost per mile for Hyperloop? Well, the cost to build Hyperloop right now, based on the current assumptions we have and the materials we're using, will be about two-thirds the cost of high-speed rail, up to three times faster a lot less energy consumed. Uh, when we pull down that low pressure environment, you significantly reduce the amount of energy that it takes to move a vehicle uh, through that, whether that's cargo or passengers. So we're pretty convinced we have a tremendous advantage. We're also convinced because of the smaller footprint, we can come right into a city center. We, can, we don't need a great big rail station that, that's, that, that takes so much space and is, is hard to build. We can connect to airports, existing uh, uh, train uh, stations, or metro stops. And really, blending those all together into a seamless experience is what we're actually so you're demonstrating cheaper. here. You're, you're saying, unique. Rob, that you're less expensive than high-speed rail? Is that is that correct? Is that because you, you don't have two to th buy land? Two-thirds the cost to construct. You just go under? You're not buying land. up land and have to pay, pay property owners? Yeah, sometimes we're above land. Sometimes we're in tunnels because the actual... A pressure reduction allows us to create a smaller tunnel or use less land uh, above ground. It's less expensive to, to uh, create the land. We can build much more quickly. Uh, we're working on some advanced manufacturing techniques that will allow us to build kilometers uh, a week rather than in months and, and some of the slow progress we've seen on other projects. So a lot's going on. Uh, we've proven uh, already here, just 40 miles from here, that the tech works. And now the goal of the company is let's right. find a customer that really wants to go out and build it. It's going to require a lot of money, though, Rob. Um, you recently had a management shakeup with Shervin Pishavar exiting the company. Richard Branson is in. You managed to raise another $50 million in funding. How far does it get you? Yeah, so the, the, uh, the, the uh, change to uh, Richard was fantastic, and we're thrilled, obviously, to have an entrepreneur of his background, his experience. He's proven that he's been able to build new companies, airlines, train stations putting people into space. So that's been fantastic. Uh, many of our existing shareholders just stepped up for another 50 million. But in the next uh, few months, we will be uh, aggressively moving forward uh, with our Series C financing. And that's really going to help us uh, uh, meet that ne next level of development that, that the company re uh, requires. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.